Technology, product innovations and future application. So we've heard a lot today about technology. We, we talked about it in the manifest in terms of things that are changing and we talked about it in the apprenticeship standard. And uh, we thought, well, let's get some experts along. Let's, let's, let's see what's happening in our industry and where the industry is heading into the future. So our first speaker is Neil Hilton, who is the head of business development GE for Hello Limited. Please welcome Neil to the stage. Vehicle manufacturers, vehicle 
dispatches. But a big part of our business is aftermarket. So it's important for us to have a strong aftermarket. Therefore, we've got to supply seminars like this, we've got to supply technical training courses, we've got to supply the correct equipment, along with the parts. It's the old picture. Some of the tasks from the front camera. <coughs> We've got a very expensive sensor on the car, so then we say, well, our developers look at this and say, what can we use that sensor for? We don't just want to use it for any departure. So we use it for a host of different functions. Road sign recognition is one of those. So you'll see that a lot of vehicles on the road now <coughs> will display the road sign that the camera's last seen in the truck past, even if you miss the road sign. Ford and our advertising system that you can turn on on the car Whatever speed sign the camera sees, it limits the car to that speed. So quite easily, we've got a situation where developers can limit the speed on a car to the road sign that it sees, which is what autonomous cars will have to do on their own without any inconvenient control of the car. We also have overtaking prohibition, so we can discriminate between a broken white line, a solid white line, a double white line. And obviously lane departure as well, which is controlled with electromechanical steering in conjunction with the camera. One big portfolio, a big large portfolio of Hella, and we've been doing this for over 100 years now, is headlights. <coughs> Some of you are probably already aware that we've got LED matrix, we've now got laser matrix headlights. So we've progressed a long way with lighting technology. The issue that we've got is the lighting that we currently have with LED metrics and, and laser metrics is so intense that we've got to protect our road users. So we use the cameras to do that. Fantastic system, but you may say, great system, but how does that affect the tail industry? That sensor and other sensors like the radar sensor are critical on the alignment of the vehicle. So we'll come on to that in a second, but the axis of the vehicle is critical to these particular sensors. We always get asked the question, when, when does a new camera require calibration? Interestingly, when new technology comes into the aftermarket, it doesn't usually affect all the different parts of our industry at the same time. This does. And I'll explain why. The top two, you, you would take for granted that you would have to do a recalibration. But you look at the next one, after windshield replacement. Because the camera's mounted on the windscreen, if we replace the glass, then we alter the calibration, so it has to be recalibrated. We move down to the next one after four wheel alignment. Why would we need to do it after four wheel alignment? We've not moved the windscreen, but we've changed the axis of the car. So, anything that you do, you've got to start thinking with ADAS vehicles. Anything that you do from a mechanical point of view, whether it be changing springs, steering rack, geometry adjustments, will affect the calibration of the camera and the radar. So, it will also in turn affect the systems. After mechanical repair, so you change the steering rack, springs, etc., that would need a recalibration. And obviously, the last one's pretty obvious for the crash of uh, Another question we get asked quite common what happens if it's out of calibration? Would I not know? Is there a warning light on the dash or, or a message? Sometimes you'll get that, sometimes. If you look at the list, the most common is incorrect function. You don't get any warning if it's out of calibration or incorrect operation due to wrong values. So, what, what will happen is, unless it's drastically into calibration, then you'll get a warning on it. Usually what happens is, the system looks incorrect. That's more dangerous. We put this to a, a lawyer in the UK, an automotive lawyer, and I'll give you a, a second to read that. That's quite interesting, the statement that came by. So I think the message is quite clear from a legal point of view. Who the finger is going to be pointed at. <coughs> What is driving the systems being fitted to vehicles? Uh, and when it first came out, I thought it was a bit weak, but, but I understand it more now that it was a voluntary uh, direction from Euro NCAP, which is the safety of the team. <coughs> From 2016, if any car manufacturer wants to attain a five star NCAP safety rating, it has to have autonomous emergency braking, and it has to have lane departure fitted to the vehicle. We've seen a growth from when we first launched our camera system calibration tool to cope with these systems. Four years ago, there were six manufacturers fitting in that systems. We counted up last week, it was now 32. So that shows the growth in these systems, and this is what's driving it. There's a lot of drive within Europe now to try and get 
ADAS systems, or at least these two systems that are on there, fitted mandatory on vehicles by 2020. I think it's a bit of a push for 2020, but you won't be far behind that. We'll look on these systems to send the, 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 the systems we'll look on like, ADA, uh, like uh, Urbag and ABS with the critical safety systems. Currently, these are manufacturers that are fitted from front cameras, extensive already. 92% of those require calibration, following mechanical work, following replacement. There's very few that fall in the category of 8% that don't need calibration. The ones that don't, just to clarify that, is usually advisory systems like Vauxhall. Uh, if it's a system that tells you that what the speed limit is, but it doesn't have any other function on the car. It's just an advisory system that doesn't need calibrating. Any other system that, that intervenes with a different part of the car, steering, braking, etc., falls in the red category. We have two types of calibration. One is dynamic, which the manufacturer chooses how they want the calibration to be performed. <coughs> this means there is no cars out there that are so calibrated, and that's a complete myth. Let me dispel that one. There is cars that will calibrate themselves once you've initialized the calibration with a diagnostic tool, which is called the dynamic calibration. These are the manufacturers that use that process. <coughs> so there's a number that use it. Static calibration is where we use our calibration and sensor calibration tool, the static calibration panel. So you can see already a lot more manufacturers have opted for that way of calibrating the vehicle, which I think is a better way because it's not restricted by weather conditions or traffic conditions doing a road test. It's done in the workshop. Um, the panels that are used uh, for the static calibration, each manufacturer has dedicated their own panels, so we follow manufacturers' instructions and we use the relevant panels. So you see there's various panels for different manufacturers. Subsequently we release the number three panels and next month we release another three. So this is a, a modular system that's, that grows with the systems and the technology that's fitted to the vehicles. The next addition that we've got is for the side and the rear cam calibration. So not only have we got front calibration, we've now got side and 360. Coupled with the camera, we also have the radar sensors, which are, are always mounted on the outside of the vehicle, usually behind the, either the grill or the radar badge, uh, or the uh, <coughs> manufacturer's badge. They also need calibrating to the axis of the camera. So you must start thinking, anything that I do that changes the way that car is going to drive down the road, as regards ride height, geometry settings, etc., the radar and camera have got to be calibrated if it's in a separate vehicle, which is more and more popular. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Neil. That was uh, excellent. And um, I've, I've had the pleasure of uh, sitting through uh, several presentations we've had up with uh, uh, colleagues of Neil's and uh, some of the other videos that they've shown in terms of uh, where we're going to head in. absolutely phenomenal. So if you get the opportunity, uh, please do. Thank you.